news. All right, in this hour, we're going to hop on to, to a bunch of your calls on a wide variety of things. Uh, but there's there's some people with whom we can discuss a wide variety of things, and those are our elected representatives out of District 9 of the State Senate. Got some North Richland Hills, some Keller, but then it sweeps on down, gets m- much of Western, like Grand Prairie. It's all over the place. It is the vast, vast landscape of State Senate District 9. Our buddy Kelly Hancock is there. Kelly, welcome. How you doing, sir? Yeah, good morning, Mark. And when, before we get started, I want to let you know that we, uh, I, along with several others, I'm sure of your listeners, were uh, praying for you and your family yesterday and the physicians and just know that there's uh, character-building moments ahead. So you know, uh, tell everybody to hang in there. Let me thank you for that wish and for that wisdom. And, and that's why I talk about it some. I don't want people to, you know, to beat people to death with it. But through every hardship, there are reasons, there are benefits, there are silver linings and things, experiences and lessons you would not otherwise have. Thank you for, for that wisdom. So yesterday, uh, in the business of legislating, you're going to try to catch the ear of all kinds of communities, especially in a time of a pandemic. Tell me about the gathering that you guys had with the, with the restaurant community. Community and uh, what what came out of that? Well, Mark, we've been hosting. Uh, our office kind of reached out to the various associations as chairs of business and commerce. You know, we deal with um, 1.5 trillion of the Texas 1.7 trillion dollar economy. So a lot of associations, and we just began uh, came up with the idea of look, let's let these so- associations let's do video conferences. Let's let them just ask any question they want to ask. Um, just because everybody wants to know and they, they want to contact somebody that they can believe in that they can trust in, and, and you know, it's hard to figure that out anymore. And so that we began hosting that, and yesterday's event was with the Restaurant Association, which, you know, I got to tell you, when this first happened, as a business owner whose, you know, revenues were impacted, you know, we lost 40% revenue literally overnight. Uh, but you hear about the restaurants and, and the closings and, the difficulties there, and our hearts just went out to them immediately. And so we began working with them almost from day one on trying to create ways to um, maintain revenue, to create re- additional revenue. Uh, so it was a pleasure to meet with them tomorrow, uh, yesterday, and take their questions. And what it, it, I can only imagine what some of them were. It, are, are they of one voice? Are they of one mind? Or is there a huge, uh, wide swath of opinion on did we reopen too soon? Was it not fast enough? Is 50% open now okay? Do we need more? What, what, what did they tell you? Well, Mark, really more than anything, they're just business owners trying to figure out how to survive. I mean, many of them, this is their livelihood. I mean, they've invested their lives. They've invested their talents uh, into this world uh, and and something they love. And all of a sudden, uh, and they've not done anything to deserve this. And and their lives have been rocked. Their livelihood has been rocked. And they're just trying to figure out how to survive. And that's what we were trying to do is just kind of listen, but also encourage is, is that, you know, the, the the money we received from the federal government as, as business owners, that money, you know, those of us that knew that this was going to be in for the long haul, it's kind of like, you know, what Ethan's going to be going through. I mean, this is not short-lived. This is going to be ongoing. Yeah. Those funds, it didn't take it didn't take a rock science to realize those funds were not going to survive the length no. of the pandemic. No. They were simply meant to provide a bridge into allowing businesses to adapt, to uh, reinvent themselves in certain areas. And so that's a lot of what we did yesterday with the restaurant owners and to encourage them that, look, we're going to be here a while. You're entrepreneurs and, and you're chefs, you're restaurant owners, which means more than anything, you're creative. And now is the time to kind of get back to where you were when you started to you know, strap it on be creative, be innovative, and figure yeah. out new ways to make it in this new environment because we're going to be here a while. State Senator Kelly Hancock with us. Let me remind myself of the way the field is striped right now. If memory serves, we were ready to let restaurants go to 75%, but then the spike happens, and right now they're at, they're back at 50. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. And, th- and with, re- with additional restrictions. I mean, it's yeah. just... Well, okay, like, like, like what? Tell know. me, like, like what was there? For, in, in fact, I, I keep telling the story because this was an example of a restaurant doing what it wanted to do, and people could either go or not go, and that strikes me as liberty all around. It was a, a patio experience we had at a restaurant, and and the wait staff didn't didn't have masks. This was very three weeks ago. Is is pretty well every uh, server wearing a mask now everywhere? 
No, correct. Which is a little bit odd, right? But it, but it's where we're going to be for a while. I mean, our office changed as well. I mean, everybody, you know, I've got people that can work from home, working from home. Yep. But as the spikes happened, we, we literally, when I go to speak to another employee, I put my mask on and I go. When I'm in my office by myself, the mask comes off because it's miserable wearing that thing. It's I hate that thing with every fiber of my being. I hate it. I hate not seeing people, but but I but I wear it. I do it in in situations where, first of all, if any business says they want me to, I do it just to be a good person, a good citizen, and not be a big jack wagon. Uh, if I'm going to be in close personal contact with somebody. You know, within the magic six feet, or you know, we're not supposed to do that at all. But within twelve, I, I mean, there there are situations where, as a good person, I choose to wear it because I want to be a, a, a good, decent citizen. Is that as conservatives the way we kind of want life to be, rather than government telling us we have to? Well, obviously, and, and you know, what we want is people to be reasonable and responsible all at the same time. And and sometimes, Mark, I think that we let uh, and. And Scripture tells us this. We let our freedom and we let our liberties get in the way of us treating one another the way we should treat one another. You know, I, I should not allow my liberties and freedoms to take over and prevent me from being that type of individual that that people look on favorably. And so uh, that is why I did it originally was to let people know that, look, I care more about you than I do about me because I hate wearing this thing. But I understand that you may feel more comfortable if I have it on. But as a business owner, Mark, I would tell you we started wearing them more often in our office and around the office because of the because of the spike and the increases we've seen. Mm -hmm. Frankly, because I don't want to shut down as a business owner. Exactly. And that's kind of where the restaurant should be. Look, if I get infections in my office, then we're down for at least a week. And yep. My revenues were already off 40%. I cannot afford to do that, nor can a restaurant afford to shut down and go below 50%. Absolutely right. So and if, I, if I were to take a poll, I mean, again, no industry speaks with one monolithic voice, but the 50% status quo, were they of a mind that said, thank God, because that's 50% better than zero, or were they frustrated that they couldn't open more? Well, Mark, I think we had a little bit of everything, as you've, as you've pointed out. And, and so what we really wanted to do on the phone call was encourage them to recognize uh, this isn't going away, so hunkering down is not an option, right? Hunkering down and, and just burying your head in the sand that this is going away tomorrow or I can, I've got enough money from the federal government, I can survive a few weeks of this. Well, it's going to be more than a few weeks. And so we just encouraged them to, look, instead of looking at all the negatives – Let's find a way to adapt. Let's find a way to adjust and, and, and recognize that, look, people still eat. And frankly, a lot of people <laughs> prefer not to cook. They'd rather pick it. Let's find ways of adapting and going. And, and we need to look at it as legislators. You know, if a local restaurant wants to provide their food through a local food grocery store or other service, we need to make sure that we get government out of the way and, and do that, which is – you know, as chair of business and commerce in the Senate, one of the things I've really liked is this pandemic has forced government to say, look, we got to get the rules and yep. regulations out of the way yep. so that business and our economy can grow. And, Mark, we've done a ton of that. And what I want to do is take that forward and say, look, if this worked during the pandemic, why wouldn't it work when it's over? Yeah, let's, there, there are things we, things. we've learned things. Statute. We've learned things about about leaner, Tell more efficiency. A, a, absolutely, and not, not to pick one, you know, tiny thing. Uh, Governor Abbott tweeted about a month ago. He said this thing about being able to roll up to a restaurant and come away with about six frozen margaritas. We'll probably keep that forever. So there are all kinds of silver lining. So, uh, listen, speaking well, of alcohol, our the Texas Restaurant <laughs> Association, right? Speaking of booze, were were bars a part of this discussion at all? Uh, you know, we touched on a little bit, but this is really the restaurant association, gotcha. and so you know that's where they were focused on. Now, you know what one of the things we're looking at is is consistency with code, and so the fifty percent mark of alcohol to food. You know, we are going to encourage the governor to look at uh, making sure that looking at moving that to a 60% level, which is more in line with what we have, the TABC, so that we just have more structural stability from one code hmm. to the next. Okay, let us let's let me take a, a hard look at that. So right now, if 51% of your income is food, if it's 51.49 food and alcohol, you're, you're not just a bar and you can operate sort of in the restaurant world, correct? Correct. You're talking about making that 60% 
meaning there there are a few a few places we'll have to have a little more on the food slice of the pie, a little less of the alcohol slice of the pie in order to avoid. Because listen, I, you're, we're of the same mind on letting people do what they want to do, but but a restaurant and a bar are a million miles apart. The restaurant you're sitting at a table, distance out the tables, you know, masks on the servers, and and I I'm I'm good to go. I'm ready to eat out tonight. I'm ready to eat out every night. The whole notion of a bar is maskless people, you know, with a growing blood alcohol level, speaking at loud volumes. It's it's a nightmare. It's just different by nature, isn't it? It, it is, Mark, but, but we have to recognize that we've changed some of the rules. And so one of the paradigms that has shifted is now we have a restaurant that Robin and I like going to um, that – now, due to reduction in rules and regulations by government, they're actually able to sell um, bottles of wine mm-hmm. with the pizza. Yeah. Well, frankly, they're, they're less expensive than the grocery store yep. with the with. So <laughs> our, you know, we may want to buy more bottles of wine, which could shift that number, right? Because. And and it's trying to create revenue for them because oh. they're only able to see. Oh, so so that's of people. gotcha. So their decision to 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 take advantage of this sort of drinks to go might heavy up their percentage. It's actually alcohol sales, which might prevent their ability to open fully. Exactly. So wow. I mean, we've got to oh, recognize boy. that hey. the whole world is changing, I know. and so we need I to know. be very open minded as legislators to say, all right, how do we adapt? Uh, to improve the economy, which is really where our office has been focusing on since day one, is gotcha. how do we keep the economy going under these new set of rules and guidelines that we're living in, and how do we help businesses and, and restaurants? I mean, we pushed really hard for the uh, mixed beverage to go, and we're successful with that. We had actually passed legislation allowing third-party delivery services to do that in the yeah. previous legislation. So we had fully vetted it. This was just moving it to individuals being able to pick up versus going through, you know, a third-party service. Well, I appreciate the update so much, and thanks for all you guys are doing. Kelly Hancock, Republican Senator, District 9. Twitter feed is K Hancock number 4 tx K Hancock 4 tx Kelly, God bless. Thank you. Best of the family. Thanks for your kind wishes, and I know we'll be talking again soon. Yeah, God bless, Mark. You bet. God bless. Kelly Hancock, State Senator, District 9. 